and we are going to look at uh, these few basic things, supplement, not replacement. In other words, we should not be replacing our lessons and keeping the kids busy while we do admin and other kinds of things in our class. We must uh, always be mindful of that. Then we're going to talk a little bit about the length of the video, what our length of our video should be, and what is the optimal length and what becomes like a movie, and then we lose the kids. Then we are going to look at using YouTube and the right and well, the right and wrong way to use YouTube and some tricks there. And then the big part of our session will be on basic video editing. And this I found very helpful uh, in the past couple of months where I had to compile and edit some videos for my teaching. So those are the basic things that we are going to talk about. Now, the first thing we're going to chat about is teaching uh, videos as a replacement. So a lot of the times the kids at home, we know that children are constantly on their screens. A videos should be, we should always look before we play a video in class. We should always make sure that we know what we are saying, what, what we are playing to the children. So even, even if we um, just, we watch, the, we see the title of the video and we think, oh, this is a cool video. It's perfect for our theme. It's perfect for our topic. And then two minutes into the video, you're playing it to your children. You realize, oh, goodness, this is the wrong language or it's the wrong completely off the rails and it's the wrong context, content, and so on. And then you have to, to, to find either a replacement video and you've lost your children. So we have to be very mindful of having choosing videos that is correct for what we want the children to do. Videos should also not be only for entertainment. We are, after all, tasked to be um, the educators of the children and, yes, facilitators. So a video can very much be um, a discussion point or a starting a catalyst for a discussion where you can then say, okay, let's see what you guys can do with this video. And then they can problem solve and stuff like that on a video. Then we're talking as video as supplement. So videos as a supplement should be should aid your learning outcome. And we all know our curriculum very well. We, we are all experts in our field. Um, and all of a sudden, thanks to also COVID, but also a few years before COVID, we all of a sudden need to all be, need, we all need to be tech savvy. And we all, all of a sudden need to be these tech geniuses and masters with all these elements that we need to bring in with our lessons with technology and videos and so on. And I know that is challenging because number one, where do we get it? Um, how, what do I choose? And this is what we are discussing today. So when we choose a video, it needs to, as I said, it needs to le lean, um, aid our outcomes and strengthen the lesson and the content and topic instead of just a replacement. A video must never be, oh, guys, just watch this 15-minute video because I have to send this email or I have to make this adjustment in this. A video must always be, um, I don't, it's, it's, like, it's like the chocolate sauce on, a, on, on an ice cream on a hot day. The chocolate sauce is the video. Yes, this ice cream is beautiful and lovely, but adding the chocolate sauce just makes it even better more better and that is what we need to do our chocolate sauce is this is the the videos that we bring in we can't just give the, the kids a vanilla ice cream that's boring if i now can use that analogy okay um we extend then the learning outcomes and we extend our learning experience through the videos and that automatically also put, gives the children a beautiful environment and an opportunity to see other people's uh, um, lives. So we have to always realize that we have kids in our classes that do not get the opportunity to travel overseas or even travel in our own country. We have different socioeconomic backgrounds and through our videos we can also then give our children the opportunity to discover 
other cultures, other way of speaking, even if it's now um, in the form of video, um, um, the landscape of other people, the, the culture and the history and food of other countries and people, and even just in South Africa. And, and so we enhance the learning outcome. Now, we're going to look at Okay, so there it says videos must help achieve the intended learning outcomes and engaging the learners. Right now, the video link. And as I said, um, as I said a, 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 a few minutes ago, I have great R's in my class, and you would think they 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 are super excited to come to my computer class because they get to sit in front of the computer. They can they have screen time. They can play. This um, instant gratification and all those beautiful things that we think kids are after today. Ten minutes into my lesson, then they were bored. They wanted to do different things. They were complaining, uh, and I realized just anew that we still have to keep on top of uh, our lessons and what we plan and the intent of what we plan. So research shows that a video um, cannot be longer than six minutes. Children. In any kind of video, children don't really um, pay attention for more than six minutes. So the optimal time is between three and six minutes. Now you think, oh my goodness, all the videos I download that's worth it is more than six minutes, sometimes 10 minutes. Well, I'm going to show you a very simple way uh, of, of um, um, making that video smaller in length, uh, in, in time-wise and making it the optimal learning opportunity and research resource. Now, talking about um, YouTube. YouTube is designed to distract. So we have to be mindful of also, when we download a video, when we use a video, and there is an ad in, in, uh, embedded in the video that we, we be mindful and skip over it, or we can use an editor like I'm gonna show you in a few minutes to cut out those unnecessary um, um, noises and, and adverts out of a video and just have the kids watch what's important. So also, you know, it follows a very specific algorithm to what you prefer your searches to be. So if you are going to show uh, your, your personal YouTube account to the kids, please be mindful of what is on your uh, YouTube algorithm. So here is an example of, of a, a YouTube account. And obviously this is, I guess, I'm guessing a history lesson. And you can see already it's nine minutes long. That is an extreme amount of time. Um, and here you can see the top one is usually the next suggestion on what YouTube is asking, is suggesting to you based on your algorithm, based on your past um, searches. So if I go search, uh, I love cooking and I love watching videos on cooking and, and baking. So all my, my uh, YouTube searches will be then on cooking and baking. Then my son goes on my YouTube account and then the next time I log into YouTube, everything is soccer and I want to just scream because my algorithm is messed up. So you've made, you've noticed that before as well. You might just click once on, an, on, a, on a post on Instagram and the next few days, all you see on your Instagram feed or your Pinterest feed is that topic that you search. Everything else here is nonsense. That is the distraction. So now I'm thinking here, oh my goodness, Nintendo, when do I see Word. That is an interesting word. I click on that video and the, for the next 23 minutes, I am distracted and I have forgotten what I wanted to do. So we, uh, so um, be, but be mindful of what we show our children uh, or your account. And I'm going to show you a shortcut or a neat trick how to get rid of the, the this at the side. So it is always also helpful to create a playlist on YouTube. And we're going to go to play uh, to YouTube um, uh, in a little bit. And I'm going to show you how, where to get here. But this is this little button here is at times your saving grace because you might sit 
very relaxed behind your computer on the on the couch um, chilling one afternoon and you come across this video or a friend or a family member sends you this link and it's an absolute brilliant video and you really don't feel like getting up right now and going to save it and put it in a, a document um, and so you can directly if it's a YouTube video you can go and click on this little button here and you can save it in your playlist and you can create different categories in a playlist so it's almost like a filing cabinet of old uh, where we used to have files and our files is theme related and topic related here it is now all digital and you this saves time when we want to uh, refer back to the video that we wanted to play and makes our search even easier so um, this is a, a, a neat little trick I will also get to when we get to YouTube. Right. Now, a, a thing that I love a lot about this shortcut or trick is embed your YouTube video. So there's, uh, when we embed, there's no suggested videos on the side. So when we embed, sorry, let me just go back a few steps. There. When we embed our video, this is gone. We don't see this at all. And everything at the top here on your, on your, let me see if I can actually go there. Because this is very helpful. Right. So here I've got videos lined up for us, um, for um, our video editing. And you can see that this is exactly what I spoke about. Now I don't have a drawing tool here, but here are, you can see I love this guy playing his music and I follow Michelle in my in my spare time i like to paint so if i scroll down i can see there are plenty of other suggestions um and then oh, no, don't paint realistic it's just getting ridiculous with all the things that it starts suggesting to me and that's where the distraction comes in so if i um if i embed the video then everything here is gone and all of this is gone Nothing. You can't see anything. And even if, so, how do we do this? So, if I could quickly go back to my PowerPoint. And um, there's no suggested video uh, videos on the side. There's no advertisement coming through. And it's automatic full screen. Uh, and here is how you do it. So, this... This is a, a, a URL, a link, and this part we pay attention to. So it's this part that says we're watching it as is. But da -da -da -da, when we embed, when we take this away, we delete it and we replace it with this little word and a forward slash, a dash, we are going to get the effect that we want. So I'm going to show it to you. This is really cool. So um, there's Michelle the painter. And I want to show it. Let's see if it works with her videos. Otherwise, I'll go to the other one. So again, I just highlight uh, it at the top. And I backspace. And I say embed forward slash. Don't forget the forward slash. You're, you are going to struggle if you don't sit, uh, don't do the, if, if you, let's say if, I, if you forget the forward slash, then you're going to get a 404 not found. And that's frustrating. Uh, so go back to your link. Highlight that little watch doodah and say embed forward slash and enter. You guys can do it. So there you can see it is automatic full screen. You still have your tabs at the top here if you want to toggle in between uh, um, sites and programs while you're teaching. Um, but there, yeah, now I play my video and it is in full screen. You can see here, there are absolutely no ad, uh, no video suggestions to me. I can't see the chat um, uh, at the bottom. I can't see anything like that. Okay, so now I don't want you guys to be too distracted with the Michelle's um, tutorial. She's very cool. I love following her. Then pause every few minutes uh, or you've studied the video. You know what the video looks like. And you can pause in certain increments and you can even do it in um, the editing, editing program that we're going to look at. 
uh, and you can explain and elaborate on different difficult concepts. And this is where the fun starts with the video editing. You can also have a quick class discussion, like with Mrs. Smith with her climate change video, and you can or, or you can complete a printed worksheet. So what the kids have seen up until two and a half minutes or three minutes or four minutes, you stop the video, quickly dish out the worksheets. They must complete it before. So that's their exit ticket or entry ticket. They, when they finish the worksheet and they've all got the correct answers, then, and it can be a quick uh, multiple choice or one word answer um, and the kids, and then you can finish the video. There, there, as I said earlier, you can even complete a digital quiz like Kahoot or quizzes, or there's many, many, many other, even this app that I, I'm, I'm using here, if you can see the bottom of my screen, I don't know if you've seen this tool. This is a cool tool that you can Im, uh, import into your PowerPoint that also has quizzes built into it. Basic okay. video editing, and it doesn't need to be complicated, honestly, is Kapwing. Kapwing is a uh, it, it, like everything else at the moment, there's a free version and a paid version. And I used Kapwing. I in, inserted, uh, I think it was 10 little videos and they were all like nine or 10 seconds long. And um, I played it, I edited, added some music, put some text with, put, did some transfers and, and, and uh, merges and all those beautiful things. And um, I played it for her on her birthday and she was so moved. It was such a cool, cool idea. It's also, as I said, very easy uh, um, uh, interface and it's much like the, uh, the Microsoft Chim Cham, Clam, Clam, that one. Uh, and it's really a uh, quick learning curve. Um, and really, you, what I always say, and I said that with, when I did PowerPoint, my presentation on PowerPoint, I say to my kids, you click a button, you, the nine out of the 10 times, you can't do anything wrong. What you can do is learn something because that's basically how most of us learn how to use computers. We clicked on a button like, oh, okay, wait, hang on. This is very cool. How did I get there? And you take a few steps back. And you realize oh, this button does A, B, and C. And you remember that because you experienced it. And you seemingly made a mistake, but you learn you 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 could uh, you learn from it. The cons with Kapwing is uh, you do need internet access. It's not um, it, it, you can't download an, an app or a program. Uh, and this is not even seven minutes anymore. It is now four, which is fine because our benchmark is between three and six. So I think the happy happy middle is four minutes um, free. Everything, literally, guys, this is so funny. I did a video with four minutes and two seconds and they didn't want to download. It didn't want to download. It wanted me to upgrade to premium and the paid version. It was really funny. So I had to go and cut two seconds somewhere. So it when this, part, when this uh, um, presentation was created, it was uh, seven minutes. They have cut it down to four. And unfortunately, it does add watermarks to the video. All right. This is your Kapwing um, home screen. And obviously, I have already uh, created an account. And that is just uh, really easy. It does give you the options of um, signing in and out with uh, Google or I can't remember now, but it will be obviously Google Outlook uh, or Facebook, one of those three. Um, and I did recently learn that if you opt for signing in with Google, uh, especially Google, it is actually safer than manually adding your um, uh, name and uh, username and password. So that's just a little Easter egg on the side. So feel free to sign in with Google just to make everybody's you know, your life easier. So this is your homepage or what they call a, your workspace. You see there, it says my workspace. And then you have the option of the free plan or the upgraded version. And it is in dollars, um, but um, the, you you get, uh, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, we don't get endorsed by Kapwing in any way, but you do get a lot of extra cool 
features with the paid version uh, and especially the Kapwing AI. Um, they've got very cool AI features embedded into the paid version. Okay, but we are going to do the free version. So here are videos that I have been playing around with over the last couple of days. And you can see that it saves it, but then it will delete in three, three days. So you can then copy a link um, uh, and just make sure that it does not get lost. And you can also save it as a brand template um, and then always have it on hand. But now we're going to look at... No. Right. So here... Okay, let me just go back. So I've clicked on new, create new project. And there it is as a free uh, blah, 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 blah. So just click create new project and this is your editing space. So this is where things might get daunting and intimidating, but it really is not. Um, and again, just go click on a button and see what it does. So first of all, we have different options of our canvases. And if you hover over them at the bottom, you, uh, um, you will see that this one is more for LinkedIn and landscape. This one is for YouTube. So in other words, if you, for example, are creating, even in your personal life, you have a YouTube channel or you want to post on Instagram and you know, you, you're an influence in some way, then you can use this uh, platform uh, for, and it has already your different ratios uh, and um, sizes set up. So there's a YouTube profile photo and a meme. That's for Instagram posts. And then there's for TikTok and again or instagram so we're going to stick with the six by nine with the youtube because that's also basically the size of uh, a screen and now my my canvas is we call the, uh, we call this a canvas it's empty uh and now obviously i can go and add a video So all you need to do, highlight the URL, right click, copy, uh, and again, you guys are more than welcome to follow along with me. You go to your Kapwing um, canvas, and here it says up, add media. You can see there's no other buttons here, you, we, and we are going to add the media. So here it say it gives an option to upload. So if you have a video that you have um, already uh, saved to your computer or a shared drive, one of your other colleagues has shared the video, you feel you want to add some cool elements to the video, you can do that. So it gives you the option to upload from your computer. Then it gives you the option to upload from Google Drive or then from Google uh, Photos. So it is Google supported. Uh, we are not going to do that, sorry. Uh, and then in the middle here, it gives, sorry guys, I don't have a cursor. I hope everybody can see my cursor. It only works um, in other parts of the of the internet, but not here. Okay, so there and I, you can either right click and paste, or there's the shortcut control V. And I did want my hover cam here but I thought that that's a little bit too much uh, information for you today. So here you can now see that the video has uploaded. So what, how, whatever video you upload, so we can actually go ahead and I want to add, also add this video and I'll show you now why I can also upload this video. So again, highlight the, the can I just stop it? Highlight the link, make sure everything is highlighted right click copy or control c go back to our project and our canvas and keep wing and you can either control v or right click control and then go with my second video you will see that the second video i think was just a minute long so it's just a short um um uh youtube video and there is my second video it's still loading. 
And so you can add as many videos as you want to upload. Now, down the side here, and you might notice that this even looks a lot like Canva. Uh, and and that, is, that is, that makes it a, little, a lot more user friendly. So then you don't have to feel that like you are discovering something completely new. Right, because we somewhere along the line, someone has worked on Canva and you know a, a little bit about the interface. You might not have worked on it, but you've seen it. And so Kapwing uh, looks a lot like Canva in the layout. So down here, you have all your options, your tools, and how I, used, I like to explain it to my kids um, is these are your pencil cases. So your pencil cases, you open it up and you might be a very organized person and you have all your color cookies in one, all your or stuff that you can color in with in one, stuff that you can cut and paste in one, stuff that you can make it pretty with glitter and stickers and all that. And that's in another pencil bag. So I like to refer to this as pencil bags. And when we click on the different pencil bags, it is going to give us, it's going to open up the pencil bag and it's going to give us different things to do to make up a project interesting and absolutely amazing. So I'm not going to say it's a pencil bag, it is the tools. And then on the left, you'll see when uh, when I, I click on, I'm going too fast, sorry. Did it just catch up with itself? All right, now maybe we must also insert a uh, media. Oh. Okay, so there's my media, there's my videos. And now it is literally a simple thing of click and drag. And that is, uh, you don't have to copy it somewhere else. You don't have to put in very complicated co co um, code. You literally copy and drag it into your Canva. And could you see what happened? Click and drag and your whole canvas uh, uh, lights up and you drop. Ha! Ah, now, here is now where the fun stops. The bottom here is your layer of your video. And there at the top, you will see there's all the sh shots. And then at the bottom, it is the audio. Okay? And remember, this, this person speaks in a different language, which um, um, we need to assist with the audio. Okay. Now, we can start playing around with this video. This is your little, they call it a, a search bar. So as I drag it to the left, up to the right, you can see that the shots enhances. It already has the, the um, subtitles in it, but I'll show you how to add subtitles. So you can click and drag. Uh, and and le leave the search bar anywhere you want and work with it. So you can see, obviously, this video is 10 minutes and 48 seconds long, and we cannot export because it says your video is longer than four minutes. And yes, we know we will trim it now. So you can't do anything with this video at the moment. So there I am going to drag it. And first, we are going to split the video. So splitting a video means that, let's say, for example, you want to have a cut where there's not much happening. Um, they they do they they show too many. It's like a dead spot in the video. Nothing is happening. No one is saying anything, and so you want to split it there. So when we split, we can drag, and now you see if you can see closer. I wish I could zoom in on my screen. Ooh, no, I don't want to do that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so there you can see I have split my screen. Let's do it. There's your undo button. Pray, uh, but bless the person who's the, who created the undo button. But I can I, I, I can click on split again. Did you see what happened? And I can drag, I can drag my split away. So there I've created a gap in my video. So if I'm going to uh, um, put my search bar just at the end of the search, the split or the beginning, and I play my video, you will see that it's a blank. That means that, and I can make it faster, three times faster, then you can see it really, really 
um, speeds up. That's also a neat tool for when you are or, um, editing a video and you don't have a lot of time and you don't want to spend too much time on it. Then this little little tool is very helpful when you want to speed it up. Or you can even slow it down if there's a lot going on and you have for three, four videos and, and overlays and music and going and you want to uh, match it up. So I can drag it back again and I can um, um, split it. And this little cute tool is amazing. This snap tool is just that. Okay. So. Can you see now I can move this around. And I have actually deleted this part of the video. But now I want to not have this gap. Right. So I'm going to put my search bar back play the video just so you guys can see there's nothing and i can't have that nothing because that's almost a minute and a half of waste time so this snap tool is very cute i can click and drag this part of the video into it and it snaps it's like a magnet and it sucks onto the previous previous part of the video and if you have it off you'll see that it doesn't have that then you have to really be careful and you're going to go over and then it's not nice. So the snap tool is a quick and easy guide to just snap it in place where you want to. Uh, okay, so that's split. Now immediately, always in a, in a video, there's a, a beginning and an end, right? So there's an intro and the guy and the, the uh, he, he's got his logo and a bit of music and a bit of, you know, like an intro, like a, any, any program or movie. And we can actually take that away. And that is what we call trim. So trim is a, a, a very effective immediate tool where you can actually say, hey, listen, see, there's his logo. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in any of that. Let's put your face there. Sorry. There we go. All right, I'm going to put you there and I'm going to trim from this side where I'm not, I'm not interested in you saying goodbye, blah, blah, blah. And I want to stop there. Okay. Immediately you can see if you play your video, then it stops right there. That is how simple that is. That is not complicated at all. And that is immediately we have uh, our, our um, video was over 10 minutes long. Now we're automatically standing in 10 minutes. Now, obviously you are, your videos, um, um, you can really just cut it all down to literally whatever size you want. You'd always jump back to the beginning and the, immediately your video is two minutes. Look at this, four minutes. There, ah, no, your, your video <laughs> exceeds four, four minutes. But if we drag it a bit back, no man, trim it a bit back. There, your export button is now green and it says, yes, we're happy. You can download your video. You also have your trim uh, tool. So let me just get most of my video back. All right, undo. Okay, go away. We know we have to have four minutes. All right, so we're going to run through the tools at, um, uh, first on the right, on the right, and then we'll go and look at the tools on the right, on the left. So here you have tabs. We've got the project and the timing and the version. Okay. So we're going to stick in projects for now. And here you can, uh, when you click on the resize canvas button, it uh, gives you an option again to change your format of your video. So. But maybe you, you you decide, no, 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 I want this for a TikTok instead of YouTube. Then you can go immediately go to TikTok uh, and you can uh, choose TikTok. Let me just put on, a, sorry, let's put it on his face so that we can see. So there's a YouTube video, a YouTube image or a roadshow. There's TikTok with the, with the, with the um, blurred out back tide. And there you have an Instagram. So uh, you have it then... We have a drop down arrow. So those are the three basic ones or the most popular ones. But the cool thing is with, with Kapwing, it gives you a drop down arrow and plenty of more options in formats that you can choose from. 
So this is lovely. It even gives you the YouTube shorts. So this little video you can see looks different than this video. So this is a normal YouTube video, but a lot of people um, uh, use the what we, what they call YouTube. Uh, sorry, YouTube Shorts, and it allows people to um, upload very quick uh, videos, and it is then in that format. So there we go. That's the short, but we're going to stick with YouTube. Then you have this fit option. You can fit it to the center. You can fill in to crop and you can um, uh, add the speaker, which is now new. So uh, it picks up this where the person speaks, which is very cool, very cool tool. Then you can have blur. So if you have, for example, that you can put the blur on or off. Now you can see the background is white, but then you can also change the background of your video. So it depends on what you want. Oh, sorry, I'm going too fast. You can change it to basic colors that it offers you. But then when you click on this little button, it gives you even more colors. Uh, so now you can say, okay, apply or open a new uh, as a new project, but we're not going to do that. So remember, this is when you start it off as a YouTube but then you realize, hmm, uh, yeah, I want to do a TikTok and you can open it as a new project. That means that it keeps the original editing, which is also cool. So you don't have to start from scratch with the other one that you did in YouTube format. You can do both, which is absolutely amazing. So maybe you decide um, you are doing a video for the kids and it's going to be a one minute video and I want to upload it to, to tell, uh, cell phones, to mobile phones, and not necessarily laptops or, or um, PCs, then you're going to use this option of TikTok or even Instagram, and it is compatible and to a mobile phone. And so you can edit both separately, which is amazing. Or you can just click apply, and it overrides your previous project. Okay, so that is background cover. Yeah, you can also put the blur on and off. So, uh, again, if we choose, oh, I don't want to mess this up. So, the blur on and off, you know, you, you, you've seen the blur. Then, uh, save, show save zone. So, this is where when I resize, I can also do that. Um, uh, it, it shows you where you can edit your video because I can move my video around. I can actually make it smaller. And add some other doodles, which we're going to do in a minute. But there you can see now the video is smaller automatically. So if I play it, the whole video will be smaller. Okay, so now here I can add what we can do is you can add a, a question, a driving question while the video is playing, and the kids must answer that question or you can pop a link or a QR code to a, a quick quiz and you can, um, we, we'll, look at, we'll, we'll look at that now. Okay, so let's just go back. And what I found with Kapwing, it is really user-friendly. You can see it gives you a guide. There's no way that you have to now go struggle to pull it and drag it. And it is really so very cool. Um, the shortcuts of copy paste, um, control Z, Control Z, uh, as many people say, it's it also applies. So let's say you you uh, drag it smaller, you don't want it smaller. Control Z, and it it undoes. Right. So this is when I okay. So now you saw. Just want his face. There we go. Right. So now we have we edited. We went through the trimming. I showed you the trim. If you click on this button, you can, you can, there's two options. You can either drag it here without a problem, or you can click at, on the trimming button and it gives you a, a new window where you then can have a clearer view of it. And you can see there where I've trimmed and I click on trim. So now you can, it gives you also the time. So here it starts on four minutes, whatever, and it ends on 10 minutes, whatever. 
and it gives you a much clearer view of it. You can uh, um, make your, your editing bar smaller and larger. When I click on trim, then it added, you can see now my search bar was there and now it is gone. I have trimmed. Okay, so crop also gives you an opportunity to crop your, um, your video. And again, then you have the blur option at the back. Filters, filters is very cool where you can have different backgrounds, different. So, you know, even if you do a, a little holiday video for family and friends, uh, you can play around with that with the kid, with, with, with your video. That's in project. Okay. Oops. Right, so that was editing. Okay, so we can that's where we uh, then we can adjust. So this is when you trim, it go opens a new video. When you crop, it jumps. So if you can see, friends, if you can see it, if I click on crop, it jumps to that part of. Then you don't have to scroll. You see, because we were just here with the uh, with the background, but you don't have to. You can just click on these quick little buttons, and it jumps to where you want. The, uh, uh, I just want to show you crop, which is a very cool tool. Here, uh, the corners, you can even make the corners rounder. And this is all, can I, can I, re can I remind you, this is off a video off of the internet, off, directly off of YouTube. This is not a video that you shot with your camera and you uploaded, with, which, by the way, you can also do. But this is a video off of the off the internet, and you can play around with it with all these amazing tools. I want to clean up the audio, and this is an amazing tool. So this is part of the AI um, feature of the program, and I, I, I um, this is I think free up to a stage, up to a point. So there, obviously, it asks upgrade to clean uh, up, upgrade. Um, but if you do decide to do the the paid version. This clean audio, you will hear, or you can't hear it, but this video, he he shoots it outside, right? And and you can hear that he's on the beach, there's wind, there's a lot of sound interference. And to clean up the audio, when you click on this little button and you, uh, you it's for the paid version, so if you can, go and do that. But then it will tell you, it will put some little red dots here in your video where the AI tool has picked up the noise, the cracks and the pops and the wind and the whoosh, uh, and it leaves its voice. And the, when it talks, it, it, it didn't pick that up. Then you can go and delete that. Or you can click on this. Ooh, I'm going to do that again. So here at the bottom, you can see that it the, the video, and at the bottom, you can see those that green little, it looks like upside down mountains. That is the audio. So when I go and click on detach audio, it splits the video from the audio. So that means if I, if I delete this, there's going to be literally no sound. How cool is that? Now what you can go and do, oh, so cool, so cool. Here down the left side of your pencil bags or tool, tool, tools, uh, um, you can have a little record button. And here, you can record your own voice. You can say record audio, and then you can say, good morning, friends. Please pay attention to the video. We are going to look at how to turn salt water into uh, drinking water. And uh, afterwards, there's an, a fun experiment waiting for you outside where we are going to actually do that ourselves. You stop the recording and there it is. Can you guys see it? You can also go and create your own um, subtitles. So I personally, I think this guy's subtitles is not very cool because it's white on a very light background. So it's, it, I don't think it will be visible on a overhead projector where everybody can see it, right? So you can actually go and add your own subtitles. And on the paid version, 
it you can act or no i think this is free um we can actually go and look at one of the other videos let's quickly go and add this video this one minute thingy so how do you add another video you can just click and drag it uh, and drop it behind the the other video so there is our first one guys this is really so easy it really is so so much fun to play with this so you play it and there we haven't done a transition but then it go it will go over to the next video okay so now i want to do subtitles and if you have if you can if the if the video is playing in the, there's not just um um music playing you can go and click on the language that is detected and click on the translation and then you you add subtitle and then you'll see your subtitles appear here how amazing is that they still picking it up it's still reading the subtitles there we go can i just can we just so we've now looked at the media and we've we've done some editing uh on the video we've done the transcribe look here so this is the first video guys this is really so cool and this is still on the free version by the way i'm not paying for it so yeah you can see it is the the first video's audio the guy that doesn't speak english and i can figure out what language it is otherwise you can go and say detect this language and this is where ai starts playing a role in our lives in such a massive massive positive way and then here you'll see say good morning friends please pay attention to the video who was that and afterwards there'll be a fun experiment waiting for you outside where we're going to actually do ourselves that is the cool part so here you can actually there you can do um um social media handles and you have more and it's in uh, automated some of them are flashing and all that jazz at the bottom then <clears throat> there you can drag your own but at the at the uh, here you have cool texts for example when i did the happy birthday video for my colleague i did one of these and i just uh which one did i use i think i yo yeah, this one this neon one so i click and drag it into the video and i can make it bigger i can make it smaller and i can say this sorry yeah you can change the font of your text box the size so this is just normal um text editing underline italic uh, um aligning and so on but i want to go and say this is a cool video and you can even leave some easter eggs for your friends for your kids so you can say okay i am going to let's delete this for for argument sake let's delete this let's put our let's put it in this frame so over here you're going to decide okay i'm going to put a simple text here uh and i'm going to say to the kids what did he pick up pick up pick up at the beginning of the video and there you have a quick pop quiz how will that not encourage the kids to pay attention so throughout your video you leave these cute little um um uh text boxes and questions and the kids are then encouraged to spot them and they are sitting ready with either a whiteboard or a pen and paper and they answer the questions throughout you can do teamwork group work where you say okay guys throughout the video there's going to be a pop ups and i want you guys to answer the questions as quick as you could possibly can um and that will keep the oh uh, my spelling is awful they keep keep the engagement of the of the video and the class uh, as we said earlier okay thank you